What's up, though, y'all? This your boy, Mr. Layback Corey, coming at y'all live with another episode of the Press for Conversation podcast. I got a special guest on the show, a special guest. He's a he's a great <laughs> Detroit community ambassador. He's a great basketball coach. I mean, this dude coached me since I was a gay high. He's, I mean, he's all. He's he's a great coach, period. He's a great influencer and everything, man. He gave, he gave us good advice. Welcome, y'all. Terry Jones. What's up, Terry? What's up, man? So, Terry, how long you um, how long you been in, in Detroit? Shit, I've been in Detroit for about seven years old, or since seventy five, I think. Okay, so how was it back then? Uh, oh. back then, in, in, in right here in the city of Detroit. It was beautiful in Detroit, seventy five. So all the houses was up. And, Neighborhood was full, man, just full with people, man, you know, full with houses, full with stores, full of community, you feel me? Mm. So, <clears throat> when did you get start off getting into basketball, and what, what made you get into basketball? When I was little, I used to play ball when I was, when I was shit, my family grew up on sports, man, so we always picked up a ball all our life, man, my mom, you know, she was a sports addict, all of my whole family, like I said, in Boston, wherever my family's at, we always was in the sports, man. My mom kept sports on TV. So she told me, um, you know, start coaching kids, man. I started um, maybe like in 80, 89, 88. You know, I was out in the streets doing other things. And uh, my mom used to see me all the time and tell me, like, uh, do something with yourself, man. Help kids out, you know. Just be out here just doing nothing, you know. You can play ball, so try to help other kids play ball. So that's what made me really get off into it. And I'll tell you, man, you do a real great job with it too, man. Like I said, you coached me when I was when I was young, and a lot of and a lot of grown men that you coach too, that's in the league, and a lot of us grown men that's still around here, you coached us, man. And I like to thank you, appreciate you for that. And see, people don't know we need that in the community. Especially in the, the neighborhood we grew up in, and I like to thank you for that. Mm-hmm. And uh, like That's I said, a lot of people, if y'all don't know, Terry Jones is a real good, good Samaritan man. Not just to the hood, man, but just community at all, man. He he loves to help kids off the streets, man. But when it comes to basketball, man, he is a serious, no mm-hmm. nonsense coach, you know. <laughs> so, what? So, <clears throat> how was basketball? How would you say basketball was back then to now? How would you say what's the difference between Basketball then and basketball now. Shit, a lot different, man. Cause uh, back then it wasn't shit to do but play ball, man. You can't do nothing but pick up a ball or go outside, pick up a football or play some baseball. There wasn't no video games. It wasn't no a lot of activities going on like it is now. You know what I'm saying? Like now, kids can get off into a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. They picking up drugs early right now. You know what I'm saying? They ain't they ain't bored about nothing. We used to be bored, so we was bored. All we can do is pick up a ball, man. You know, or find some trouble to get into. Yeah, I know this. <clears throat> what's your biggest pet peeve about you know? What's your biggest thing about coaching kids and they? What's your biggest pet peeve about coaching? Period. Like, what stands out more when you coaching basketball? <laughs> Just trying to just get a kid to do do a little bit better in life, man. You know what I'm saying? And get him out the neighborhood, man. Just trying to make him find a bigger dream than just what he see every day in the streets, man. You know, coming out looking at lots and vacant houses and nothing, man. You when you see looking in the neighborhood, isn't there's really no cats over there no more. So, you know, and the kids that's in the neighborhood, they're looking at nothing. You know what I'm saying? They ain't looking at no good environment. That's why we're trying to clean that shit up every day. So, you know, it's just something, you know, I, I do, man. You know what I'm saying? Whatever kid that's over there, left over there, I want to try to help him get up out of there, man, because I know it ain't no way to be, man. Ain't no way to be. Yeah. I heard you guys had a, a, a summer program for basketball last summer. Can you elaborate on that? How did that go? Uh, well... That went because, um, you know, we were just trying to find something to do for the kids because of COVID. And um, it was really boring at the time, man. Like, the months, man, being in the house, man, I just said my kids was caught up for my team. 
Like they need a gym to get into it. Now I, I can't make nothing happen like that. I ain't no magician. I can't pull no gym out of the motherfucking hat. So I I went up there and just, you know, I like I said, I work in the neighborhood anyway. So I always try to keep that playground up, even though, you know, if I'm not working, I'll pick up paper around. So I decided I'm gonna do something with the kids. And it wasn't all me, it was like Mr. Mr. Brooks, you know, he uh coached, you know, high school basketball. He said he wanted to bring some teams over there. And I said, well. I'm gonna get the court ready for y'all because I'm gonna start something up with the kids, you know, a little basketball program up with the kids in the summertime. So we just tried to bring basketball back in the community. We didn't know that there was gonna be that many teams that came over there, man. And, you know, like I said, I'm gonna take my hat off to Coach Brooks, getting them teams over here. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? And uh, my neighborhood. So, you know, coming out and uh, helping me support that stuff, man. They was, they gave me money too. You know, I I don't, I don't want people to just say it's all it was me. It was, you know, it was it's Coach Brooks and it was it really was the guys in my neighborhood. They helped me. Man, it was packed over there last summer. You guys did a hell of a great job. But the thing is, I didn't find out about it until like the end of it, and I'm like, dang, because I I hope you guys do it again. I hope you guys do it again. Shit, man, I hope this shit be over with. I don't <laughs> want to do that no more because, man, that was a lot of work, man. But I'm saying, um, you know, we're just hoping that it this, this COVID-19 be over with in two or three months. We ain't got to go out there in that hot sun. We can get back in the gym, man, and, uh, you know, just get back to continue what we was doing, man, you know, with the kids, man. You know, you know I don't want it to be out like, you know, like I said, like out there again like that, man. I just want to go back to normal. You know, this this really burning me, this COVID-19. I can't get in the gym the way I was supposed to. And a lot of things this shit has shut me down from doing, man. So, uh, you know, it was cool with all that with the playground thing, but I don't want to go back to that, man. For real. Yeah, ain't no, ain't nothing probably like opening doors. I tell you that for man, real. So. But guess what? It was love out there, man. It was, it was love out there, cause, like I said, the kids loved it. The other neighborhoods, they came around, they loved it, man. It was love, man. We didn't have a fight out. We had one fight out there, and it was some kids we didn't even know from. They was from other teams, but uh, everything else was cool, man. Like you know, guys, made sure everything was cool. You know, the hood is the hood. I know everybody's gonna do what they do out there and whatever. But it wasn't no fights, man. It was no problem. And that's that's great, man. Especially coming from the neighborhood I was in or whatever we are we we grew up in, you know what I'm saying? Because you like the OGs to us because we came away under you. And like I said, I really appreciate what you have done for the community alone. And for me as a kid growing up, I know I wasn't really around this much playing basketball, but I think that somebody took the time out. So put the kids, the kids together, and get them the time of the day because a lot of kids need that, and they deserve it because they didn't ask to be here. So, you know what the kids for? <laughs> right. So I see your favorite team is the Boston Celtics. Mm. I see you uh, uh, go green. <laughs> All the time, man. Green one deep in me. Do you think Boston have enough juice to get to the um, NBA Finals this year? Oh, uh, man, I hope so. I'm going to say yeah right now, but you know what I'm saying? You know what it is, but, you know, we got to keep working, man. They, you know how it is, man. It's the NBA, man. They got to have a lot of fire, man, to get through that shit, man, get through them woods, man. Got a lot of change to run through, man, and working with two and three, four people, I ain't going to, you know, but they they going to win, man. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, when you first uh when you first started coaching, was it was it around here at the Joseph Wynn Walker Center or definitely, definitely, definitely in my hood, man. You know what I'm saying? That's where I first started at, like like I told you in eighty nine, like my mom, she always used to see me, man, in the wrong, man, coming in the house in the wrong. She stopped me and just told me, like, just go to Mr. Bradley and Play basketball when you was little. Why did you stop playing ball? You know, and this and that, and just got on me about ball all of a sudden. And I just said, "Shit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Mr. Bradley and just tell him man, I just want to help out with some kids, man. You know, my intentions weren't really to coach. I was really just going to help, you know, 
By the time I got to the gym, Mr. Bradley, this nigga threw me the ball and he gave me a damn whistle. He said, man, it's on you now. And he walked out the gym on me. So I'm just stuck in there with like 15, 20 kids, you know, and they probably was the toughest little kids in the hood. I'm like, shit, we gotta get this together, y'all. And we start playing and, you know, one thing led to another, man. And the Saturday mornings came and shit. And Mr. Bradley, I thought he was gonna sit next to me. His ass went linked against the wall and shit. So now I'm by myself. So that's why I'm used to I'm used to coaching by myself, man, because Mr. Bradley all just left me, man. I he said, like, do it, man. You gotta do it on your own, cause he did it on his own, man. He was a strong, strong man, you know. That's who the park name got to Mr. Bradley. A lot of people don't know that though. Well, you know what? The good thing about that is that you found your niche early. Like you found something that you got a passion about, you enjoy doing. You found it early. It probably came unexpected, but you found it early. It took a long time. It takes a long time for certain people mm -hmm. to find their niche. And some yeah. people don't find it at all. Yeah, it did take me like about well, 15 years to, to really just, I'm, I've been in it for 33, but it took me like 15 years to really, really, really catch up and start really loving it. Start really looking deep down and it's just, it's, you know, it's different. It's, it's more than basketball than this shit, man. You got to keep coaching, but it's more than basketball than this. It ain't just coaching, man. You got it's love too, man. It's, and the shit start edge catching up with me, man. You know, and I start feeling more deep, falling deeper into it. You feel me? In basketball, so it ain't just just picking up a ball, trying to gather some kids, man. It's a lot more. So basically, it. you came up for you, you became a philosopher with basketball, basically. Man, I became everything, a teacher, a motivator, a everything that went along with it, man. You feel me? It, all that shit came to one, man. You don't see even the role model people would say, but I tell them, I'm not no role model, man. Your mom and your pops is the role model, man. I'm just somebody that's going to help guide you, man. You know, just helping you get out of this shit, man. You know what? I've been through this shit. I know. A lot of niggas ain't really been through the shit, man. Like I've been through, man. I've been through journeys and storms. And I've been through a lot of shit by myself, man. So I just try to tell a kid, nigga, don't do that shit. Don't, don't go that direction. If you had the power, if you had the power to, to change anything in the world, anything in, the in this neighborhood or the world, what, uh, what would you change? See, that's easy, man. For it just to be some straight, straight up peace, man. Love, man. Like, I'm about to start coming back out with 60s and 70s shirts with love on it and peace and love, man. So, you know, I say that shit every day, man. Niggas have love, man, for people, man. Like, if you ain't got no love for nobody, man, you living in a crooked-ass world, home. Boy, you a crooked-ass person. You know what I'm saying? You, you, built, you built up with the devil inside of you. You ain't got no morals, no nothing, man. If you ain't got no love in you, man, I, I wasn't raised in no household like that, so... I don't really know what hate is, man. You know what I'm saying? So everybody, you know, everybody got a little hate for somebody, but like, I'm just gonna be 100 with y'all, man. Like, I ain't, I ain't had no hate to me, man, because my mom always talked about love, man, you know? She ain't never say, you know, when I said I was gonna pay somebody back or I didn't like somebody, she told me that was the wrong word to say in her house. So I knew, I knew how to erase that quick, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. Do you think the OGs, uh, including, like yourself, including OGs like yourself, do you think they, they give a lot to the youth nowadays, or do you think they did slow down? I don't see too many OGs out there, man. I'm just going to... One of the niggas got OGs, he just fucked up anyway, because, you know, when I was raised up, man, OG was a guy that, that gave something, that gave advice, man, and taught a nigga something, man, and kept a nigga cool, man, and, you know... Taught a nigga something, man. To try to raise a nigga through the streets, man, and survive, man. Like, these OGs out here, they giving niggas guns and drugs and all that. That's what niggas call OGs now. And that's the wrong way, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, they OGs, old gangsters. They ain't no old gentlemen like us, man. Like, we was raised in the streets, man. Like, to love people, man, to give, man. You know what I'm saying? That's, nigga, give love, man. You gonna get love back, man. You feel me? That's how it go, man. Like, I ain't never had no problem in my neighborhood. I wonder why is that? Cause the nigga always gave, gave love and advice. 
You feel me? And I've been like this way before. You feel me? I've been like this. You know what I'm saying? Since you yeah. knew me. Oh, yeah. Hell you yeah. Know? So. Hell yeah. That's what I'm saying. It was about. never no act. It was never no fucking act. Hell no. Nah, nah. Mike, you, I mean, you, you've been the same since I know you. Right, right. Same Terry, man. Like, just like I said, you took, you took life serious. Yeah, everything's serious, man. You know, for my mother, went back to Boston. That was in 90, 1990s. Last thing she told me, she said, Terry, don't let these people kill you. And that's why I just try to dodge and ease, you know, weave my way through that fucking neighborhood, weave my way through life. You know what I'm saying? I don't have no family in Detroit, you know? I got two daughters and some grandkids up here, but I ain't really, I don't have no family up here. I don't have no bunch of cousins. A whole bunch of, all this shit, man. I don't have no bunch of relatives up here, so. You know, I had to weave my way through it, man. You know? Well, you know what? Like, well, you have a family like in me because I appreciate you, man. And yeah, I, 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 I really it. enjoy the advice that you gave to us as kids, man. And I like I said, it wasn't just, it was more than basketball. I wasn't, I moved to the east side. My mother moved me to the east side. Because I know we got a history. Your, your, my mama did the numbers with your mother. So yeah. that's that's. Yeah, that's why I met your mom, because my mom used to play the street numbers, you know. Right. She loves, she used to love the numbers. Exactly. So for the people out there that want to get in touch with you, what are two social media sites we can do to get in touch with you? You know, I'd rather for a nigga call me. That social media <laughs> stuff is crazy, but I'll be just, I don't know, you know, I just be, when I be on social media, man, I just be, I just be mad, man. You know what I'm saying? I really be mad, man. I just be wanting, that's some shit to tell you, nigga, get the fuck away from me. You know, when I be on that like mad, I just tell nigga how I feel because I don't see people much. You know what I'm saying? And anyway, I coach kids, so I, I, I'm outspoken anyway. You know, I'm going to speak my mind anyway, and I don't like to hold nothing back. So when I be seeing different shit, I be, I be, it don't even be shit about me though. It don't even be shit about me. It be about somebody else's shit. I just be listening. I just be like, man, I'm tired of this shit, man. Like, right. what fuckers get to killing and saying this about people and doing this and doing this. And man, it just irritate me, man. I'm a grouchy old nigga. So you got to understand that shit, man. Like I'm almost 60. You gotta understand that, man. Like all old niggas is grouchy and keep a knife in their pocket, man. Yeah, man, yeah. Who don't? Man, but like I said, for the ones that just tuning in, this is the Press for Conversation podcast. I got a great host today, Terry Jones. Don't wanna miss him. Yeah, you could if you can't find him, you can find him on the basketball court. Yeah, any yeah. day, any time, man. I'm all, that's where a coach fuck to be at in the gym or on the around the court. Nice. I don't know no coach that don't be around no gym or no court. He ain't no damn coach. You <laughs> feel me? <laughs> well, all right, y'all. We're about to wrap this up. Thank y'all once again for tuning in to the Press for Conversation podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Layback Corey. If, if you like this, hit the like and subscribe button. Peace.